Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Janine Gartner, and I'm one of your trainers here at RealComp. Today, we're going to do a quick tutorial on how to use the map search to complete a CMA. So, starting from our home page, I'm going to hover over search, and in this particular CMA, I'm going to choose residential and choose the quick search. Now, there's just a couple things that you're going to need in order to complete this task. Number one, you need a subject property. It might help if you go to public records, do a search for your subject property to gain all the information that you need before you begin your CMA on the property. That way you don't have to go back and forth and dig for more information while you're still completing this particular task. So I've done that, and I have my particular subject property that I must do my CMA with. Now, there's also two things that you need to know about a CMA. The difference between a CMA and a regular old search are just two particular items. Number one, location, location, location. Number two, time span. How far back in that location that you've chosen are you going to go find the particular properties that you need? Without those two items, you're just doing a regular old search. So, the first item that's needed in this particular map search CMA is the address of the subject property. Since I have that, I'm going to again go to search, residential, and quick search. And right in the center, I could either type in an MLS number, an old MLS number will do about the subject property, or even a current one or I can simply type in the address. Now, when I type in the address in this box here, I can use the north, south, east, west, the drive, lane, road, court, way. It's different from an address search, and I am searching on a map in particular. So I'm going to go ahead and put that information in about my subject property. So right in the center, in this empty box, it says miles of. I'm going to go ahead and type in that subject property. Now, I've typed in the street number, the street name, and the only other item that I need is either the city or the zip code. You don't need both. Next, I have to pick how many miles within the subject property I would like to search to complete my CMA. If I click that down arrow where it says within, I could go anywhere from a quarter of a mile up to 25 miles. I'm going to go ahead and click at one mile just to start. When I choose one mile, I know that I've completed it because it says map area selected in red. If the system did not recognize this address or the area, map area selected would read in black. So that's your first clue. Your second clue is down at your bottom left-hand corner where we have our count on the fly. It tells you exactly how many matches you have within a mile radius of this address for all statuses. So I'm going to narrow that down a bit. But first, I want to double check to make sure I'm in the right area. So I'm going to go to my upper right-hand corner and click on the Map tab just to double check and make sure I'm in the correct area. When I click on the map tab, of course, here's my radius, and I see my red button. That lets me know that's my subject property with all the other properties surrounding it. I think I've stretched it a little bit, so I'm going to go back to actually zoom in a bit by clicking on my criteria button in my upper right-hand corner. This is my back button. I'm going to take it down from a mile to probably about a half of a mile. And once I change it to a half a mile, again, the system responds immediately with how many matches I have. So I've got quite a few to hone in on. So I will start my search. In my upper left-hand corner, I'm going to go ahead and put in my statuses. Now, there is no right. There is no wrong. It's just whatever data you're coming up with to actually prove this to your customer. So I'm going to click on sold. Sold shows value, but I'm not going to go back a year. If I look down at my bottom left, it's telling me how many matches within a half hour of the subject property have sold within a year. 
I'm going to click in the backspace and backspace out 365. I think I'll start with six months or 180 days. And when I type that in again, since we have a count on the fly, it takes it right that information right away. I'm also going to come down and choose residential since that's my subject property. And again, the system reacts to that. There is no need for me to scroll down and fill in the county, the area, the city, or the school district. I've completed my location tab by filling in the radius around my subject property. That leads me to the third column. In this particular CMA, I'm after the price, so I'm actually not going to fill that in. I want to see what prices will show up with the criteria that I type in in the area. But in order to enhance my search, where it says transaction type, I would like to rid myself of any leases. They won't help me with the CMA, so I'm going to click on sale. And sale will give me the bottom dollar sale to the top dollar sale of every property within a half mile of the subject property that sold in the last six months. I'm now going to fill in the criteria that my subject property has so that I can compare it. So I'm simply filling in the number of bedrooms that the property has, the number of bathrooms, and again, as my numbers change, I'm paying attention to that. And two important figures that I need to fill in. I, I always need to be cautious of these. Will my Does my subject property have a garage and does it have a basement? I need to answer yes or no to these because there may be some searches there that have either or, and I want to make sure I narrow it down as that's value added to the property. So for the garage, my subject property has one. I will say yes. If it did not, I would say no. And again, my subject property has a basement. I will say yes to that. If not, I would have said no. Now that I have my matches, I'm going to simply scroll down and click on results. When I click on results tab, here they are. They will show that for me in my search. If I want to double check again, I'm going to click on the map just to make sure they're all fitting inside of my radius. Again, the red button is my subject property. I'm going to go back to results. And now I'm going to simply pick the different results that I need to complete my CMA. There are several ways that I could do that, and that's by changing the display. A couple of displays you might find helpful. If I click the down arrow where it says display, I might want to see pictures first. So I'm going to come down to summary. When I click on the summary, now I'm able to look at all of my results on one page and gather more information about the particular properties I'd like to use in my CMA. This gives me a quick synopsis of each property. It also gives me the agent and the office, and I get to, re get to read the remarks section of each property as I'm searching. When it's time for me to pick the properties I'd like to use, I'm going to scroll up to the top, click the down arrow again for display. And I'm going to choose the single line number two. When I click on the single line number two, here's the information that it gives me. The MLS number, the current status, the date that it sold, the property type it is, I chose residential, the five digit area number, address, city, the price, which happens to be in this case, the sold price, days on market, beds, baths, and above grade square footage. So I can sort by any of this information. Perhaps I'd like to sort by the date. So I can literally click on the word date and it would put it in chronological order for me. Or perhaps square footage would be something that I'd like to look at. So I can click on above grade square footage and that will put it in order for me as well. When I'm ready to pick my properties, I'll simply check the boxes on the left.
And once I've chosen my particular properties, I will scroll down. I will click on print. And when I click on print, if I've printed before, I will have a reminder of the forms that I use. But I'd like to get all of my options. So I'll click on more click. And I will scroll on down. And I'm going to choose a flyer. Notice that I'm choosing client flyer because I'm going to present this to the customer, which removes the listing agent's information and puts your information as the presenter. So I'll choose the client flyer. I'll scroll down a little more. Hold my control button down because I'm going to select more than one. Choose the multi-map. And I'm also going to scroll down a little lower. And I'm going to hold my control button down and choose the CMA one line to get my figures. Once I've chosen a flyer, a map, and my CMA one line, now I have the opportunity to email this report to a customer or print it. I'm going to click on print to PDF so I can preview it before I decide to either print or email it. When I click on print to PDF, it takes a moment for the reports to generate. And once they come up, you have your header at the top. Again, as you scroll down, these will all be on letter size paper. It puts your name and your phone number and your office and phone number. As you continue to scroll down, here are all of the flyers. And here comes your map showing you where each of your subject, where your properties around your subject property are located for your client to understand where each property is in location to each other. And then as you continue to scroll down, here comes your one liner CMA. So the one liner CMA time stamps the property the CMA for you. It also reads back your criteria and it shows you each property that you used in the CMA, the beds, the baths, the square footage, the year built, the date again that it sold, price per square footage, cumulative days on the market, your original, list, sold price, and a new column, the sold price percentage of the original list price. How close did they come to selling it for what they originally listed it for? As I continue going through the CMA one-liner, the next column gives me my averages for my low, high, medium, and mode. And finally, the grand totals. I have two grand totals. I have my averages of square footage, cumulative days on the market, original list price, list price, and then finally, my sold price. Also, I have a median of the square foot, uh, price per square footage, cumulative days on the market, original, list, and finally, sold price. At the bottom, it lets you know and your customer know who's it presented by. And if you so choose to, you could print this or you can actually email it to your customer, depending on how you'd like to present it to them. So I'm simply going to close this window and go back to my results. And there you have how to do a quick CMA using the map search. If you'd like to find more information out, you can definitely watch our video under the help button in RCO3 under training videos and recorded webinars where we have the full class of how to do different CMAs in a webinar. Or please think about joining us here at the Real Comp location for a full class on public record data slash CMA comparative marketing analysis. Thank you for joining me this afternoon. I hope this video has been helpful to you. Bye-bye.